Okay. Last week's episode was insane. This week's episode was a little bit more of the calm before the storm. Let's break down WandaVision episode six. Last week left us off on a huge cliffhanger because Evan Peters Quicksilver came into the MCU. It was revealed that somehow in some alternate universe, potentially he is Wanda's brother, Pietro, who we know died in Avengers Age of Ultron. So I was very much looking forward to seeing where they're going to go with this character next and how are they going to continue to excel this great show because this show is able to do something that is a little bit different where it takes our expectations of the previous week and they it really adds on to it the following week. So WandaVision episode six, after Vision questions a lot of Wanda's motives, we see ourselves finally in the 2000s as the intro changes. It's a special spooktober type of episode with the Halloween special. So we have a, a nice little holiday special episode and it's actually referenced in this episode, which is great. Like I love how meta this show is. And while Halloween is going on, Vision is trying to look more at what is actually happening here. What is beyond this world that Wanda has created for them. And you also have the people at S.W.O.R.D., which are Darcy, Monica, and Wu, who are all trying to basically see what is going on with the director Hayward as he is really just a complete dirtbag and that there is something more at hand that he is trying to accomplish than just trying to bring these people to safety because that's not what he wants no 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 no. he wants like world domination or something as usual this episode to me really found its stride in allowing us to understand the central nervous system of the of each character and what i mean by that is we get to see and pick apart inside their heads what are they trying to evaluate what are they trying to do evan peter's character pietro or quicksilver or whoever he might be i know a lot of people are theorizing he could be mephisto which you know i'm not gonna take that off the table because after this episode i'm like eh, maybe he is really questioning wanda about how she did certain things how did she make this happen and how he is almost in a way posing to be something that he's not, to maybe try to get some type of gain or some type of better understanding on how to cultivate this world potentially to his own gain. And I, I think that that's really interesting. Like his character is very fascinating to me. I'm not gonna say he's Mephisto, even though there are a lot of different things in this show, in this episode specifically, that really kind of hint at him potentially being Mephisto, calling her, her sons demon spawns, having hair that kind of looks like devil horns. Like there are things in this episode where you're like, yeah, he could be Mephisto and there could be these hints, but also Kevin Feige is smart. Maybe he's just trying to kind of play with us a little bit and really make us question all of these things. So that way we get more anticipation for each and every episode because Kevin Feige is the man. Vision starts to question things. He starts breaking out and going to the outer parts of Eastview and you know what he finds is that these people out there, they're under Wanda's control, but they're basically doing nothing. They don't move much. They basically just kind of stand around. They stare off in the distance. And I think it's because they're not central to Wanda's story. This is her story. This is her show. This is what she wants. Those people that directly impact her and Vision, they are central characters. They have personalities. They have an interesting thing about them. Whereas these characters on the outside, they're not actual characters. So they basically can be probes <laughs> in a sense. They're just droids. They just walk around aimlessly doing nothing. And Vision starts questioning, what is, what's that play here? How is she able to control all of these people? And then he finds Agnes, which that is one of the creepiest scenes I've seen. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, Katherine Hahn is such a phenomenal actress and she really gave it her all in that just one scene that she had in this episode that really stole the show. But he goes inside of her head. She asks if he's dead. Vision finds out that he's dead and that he's actually not alive. And then she does a witch laugh 
which is which is very interesting. A lot of people believe she's Agatha Harkness, including myself. But what if she's actually Mephisto? Like, what if she is the one who's causing all of this, which would be insane. And she wants Wanda to play in this game, and she's just going alongside of her, acting as a friend, but really manipulating Wanda in the process. But there's there's a lot of different ideas of who Mephisto could be. Now, the interesting thing is he, Vision, breaks out of the quarantine. He breaks out of the hex. And as he's breaking out of the hex, because Wanda doesn't want him to leave, he is dying. He literally is having his like parts ripped off of him. And while this is all happening, Wanda is still being questioned by Pietro. And then her sons develop abilities. So they have super abilities. One has super speed like Quicksilver. The other basically has Wanda's abilities. And then um, she expands the hex. That's where the episode leaves us leaves us off. And then also the people at Sword, I should say, because that's also the other subplot. They are trying to figure out what's going on with Hayward because Hayward kicks him off the project. He sidelines them because something is not right with him. And he is looking to try to potentially do something pretty stupid and pretty bad. Maybe he's Mephisto. I mean, there's a lot of different ideas of who this one character could be. And I love theorizing all of this. I really do because it makes this show so much fun. The thing about this episode though is like, this probably might be my least favorite episode. And I'm not saying that because I, you know, disparagingly or saying that because I don't like the episode. It's, I felt like this episode just really was the calm before the storm. It was the filler. I think the next three episodes, it is your third act. You have to develop that climactic moment. We have to be ready for everything to come to a head and really have the conflict at its all time high. And I think that the next three episodes really have to deliver that because now you're, you're out of act two. Now you're in act three. Let's make it work. Now, the unfortunate thing about this episode, I will say that I didn't mention before is that I got spoiled for this episode. Someone in my community over at Twitch, which you can go follow me, twitch.tv slash Nick Talks uh, down below in the description of this video, I will put that link. But somebody in my community spoiled it for me and I was really pissed. I, I'm, I'm still not happy about the situation, but they did say one thing that's not true. So I'm happy about that. They said that Vision died a second time. Vision's not dead. I don't think he's dead at all. I think that he's hurt really bad, but he's already, in a sense, a zombie. So it's like, he's already undead. I don't think he's gonna go back to dying again. And I've seen footage from trailers of certain things that have to happen with Wanda and Vision that haven't ha happened yet. So I think Vision's fine. I don't think he's dead, but the hex does get bigger. I did get that spoiled for me, which, you know, I didn't understand the context, but it still pisses me off that I got spoiled. Um, so don't spoil, don't be a tool. Wait to release your video maybe a few hours after the episode premieres. Give people an opportunity to watch um, the episodes before you really kind of dive deep into the spoilers. That's why I make these videos and I put them out on Monday or Sunday or whenever so I can give people some time to actually enjoy these episodes of WandaVision. And same thing with Mandalorian, even though I talk about it the same day and I do it live, but that's because I feel like that's enough time to give people. I don't wanna do it like right away. But I enjoyed this episode. I just don't think it's my favorite. It's my least favorite. And I think that this episode, to me, felt more like a filler episode. It felt like a, a, an episode that's really going to be that, like I said, again, the calm before the storm. I know I've said that three times, but that's what it felt like to me. It felt like next week we should get into the actual third act of the story structure that WandaVision is creating. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on this episode of WandaVision. What did you guys think of episode six? Let me know down below in the comment section of this video. Thank you guys as always for watching this type of content. If you like it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. I greatly appreciate it. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you are brand new as I post content on a regular basis. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.